Hey folks, okay, today we're gonna look at how access control actually works in the POSIX uh, system and the POSIX model. Uh, so POSIX uses access control lists and POSIX is, it comes from kind of uh, Unix-like systems. Uh, POSIX is now a standard that uh, people um, uh, follow and so you can be a POSIX compliable, compatible operating system. Uh, so these like that's why you have things like BSD and Linux and all that fancy stuff. They all conform to this standard. And so the way this is, is each file. So again, it's access control list. So if we remember when we talked about implementing uh, access control, uh, the access control matrix an access control list stores with each file, the permissions. Now, if we remember back to that model, our model of access control list specified for every subject in the system or every subject that had any rights on that object that they would have a entry in that list. So if you think about you're going to go implement this because you're building an operating system, how are you gonna actually do this, right? If you think about every subject on the system is a process, every process on the system is, let's say a file is readable by everyone and you have 10,000 users, well, that's 10,000 entries you'd need to have of just uh, writable. And maybe some of those are readable and you can think like, actually it's gonna take up a lot of space. So. Uh, when they were designing this model, they had to uh, deal with this problem of actually you want things to be very fast and um, and space efficient so that you have if you had a thousand files that were all readable by everyone, because there are many files that are readable by everyone, you don't want to have to take up a ton of disk space in order to specify that maybe that file has no content. So you have the the metadata of the access control list specifying way more information than needs to be in there. So what they did was they actually said, okay, what if we can encode stuff in this list to just using 12 bits? So think about like 10 plus two more, think of two, your two big toes or something, uh, using just 12 bits per each file, let's be able to specify the access control list. Now, as you can understand, if you only have 12 bits and we were just talking about on some systems, you could have a thousand different entries in the access control list or tens of thousands of entries. Fundamentally, you can't represent all of that with just 12 bits. And so these 12 bits are going to be on on or off, depending on if that bit is if uh, that bit is set. And we'll see it's kind of like a, a little bit a different type of like subject model that we're used to thinking about. But those three 12 permission bits are grouped into four sets of three bits each. So we have three, 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 three. And this is actually something you've seen before, and I know it probably. I highly doubt you're starting just on this module because you want to learn about access control, but you've studied and understand how Linux works and using the Linux command line, and you've probably used the ls command to look at something like this, and you've seen some output, and they maybe had little notations in here, and we'll get into those, but this actually represents those 12 bits. Let's just double check and count because I love counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So those are 12 bits there. And the first three bits are set UID bit, the set group ID bit, and the sticky bit, which we'll get to. And then <clears throat> the next, so these are kind of special bits. And then each of the other bits specifies read, write, execute. So it's read, write, execute, read, write, execute, read, write, execute. And then it defines who can read, write, and execute that. So the first one is the owner of the file. So what permissions the owner of the file has? Can the owner read, write, or execute? Um, can the owner's users in the files group? So we'll show how this works. Uh, people in the files group, can they read, write, or execute the program, uh, the file? And then finally, everyone else. So anyone else who's not in there. So all is the way to think about that. Read, write, and execute. And these are 12 bits that form the basis of in U POSIX Unix-like systems uh, that define this. Now, modern systems are actually much more complex. There's other layers that can be applied here and it can get very complicated, but this is just what we're gonna focus on here. So uh, we're gonna go over exactly how this works by looking at it on a real system. Um, but this is what I want you to, to be thinking about. Set user ID, set group ID, sticky bit, read, write, execute, read, write, ex read, write execute for owner, read, write, execute for group, and read, write, execute for all users on the system. Okay, and let's uh, look at this first, um, because I think that's better. So we're gonna SSH, I've already set this up with, I think the first 
currently whatever is the first level one of access control. It may be different in your day. I don't know how far in the future you're, uh, you know, reading this or looking at this. So uh, I can't tell that, but I want you to, uh, this is something that we can do. So we can uh, use the ls command. So if we do man ls, so ls is for list, like ls list directory contents. So list information about the files, the current directory by default. So we can see this is capital file file because of this file here. So it's, excuse me. <coughs> so it is. So we are listing information about the files. And there's a lot of arguments. So dash lowercase a, do not ignore entries starting with dat dot. So actually, when you just do ls, it ignores any file that begins with dot, including dot and dot dot. <coughs> Excuse me. A uh, whole bunch of other options. Let's see, what are some other ones? Um, list just directories themselves. Um, Anyways, let's, uh, uh, L, there we go. Use a long listing format. So that's the main one we're going to look at. LS does a lot of things. So if I do PWD, it'll show us right here. I'm going to go into a temporary directory. So I'm going to change my directory to slash TMP. So now if I do present working directory, it says slash temp. And if I just do LS on the directory, I can see this. Uh, if I do this, I think by default, LS can tell that I'm in a terminal and choose to do colored output like this, which is why... Um, this is showing, these files are showing up as, uh, what's this, like a purpley color. Um, if you do ls-a, it shows, again, <coughs> excuse me, I need some water. So if I do ls-a, it shows me everything that begins with a dot. So there's dot cc dot text dot crates dot toml dot crates to dot json dot dojo. This is again, all in the temporary directory but I'm still not getting all the information I want. So I can do ls-la, so long and a. Uh, again, thing on the command line, you can put the dash short, the short options, which are just one letter. You can do them uh, completely separate like this, or you can combine them together into one. And now we get a lot more output. So we get dot, which is the current directory, dot, dot, the parent directory, and we get to see all these files. Um, let's see kind of just parsing this by uh, feel. So these, I believe, are probably the created on date. So when that file was created, you can get this in a better format that specifies it more precisely. This column is the size of the files here. Um, so this 4096, I believe, is just a maybe the standard size of what a um, directory is on the file system. But you can see these other files. This is a 4-byte file, 55-byte file, 453-byte file. And then everything else that's very important is actually this first two columns. So if you look and if you remember, we had, uh, let's see, we had 12 bits, right? 12 bits that we care about. We have one, let's see what we have here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So uh, we actually have all 12 bits displayed here just in different ways of how it does it. So that's why this doesn't match 100% of what we talked about there. But I'll talk about in a bit why we specifically did those four groups of three bits. So, okay. So the first uh, field here is a dash for regular files and a D for directories and probably something special if I look in slash dev. Yeah. Uh, C is probably character device. L is probably a symbolic link, it looks like. Is that right? Yeah, those look like symbolic links. Um yeah, so character device, device, um, there may be other stuff here. Uh, let's see what's in here. Actually, just like uh, poking around. And you can explore like this. And you can also just like look up these kinds of things. And um, uh, PTS zero. Yeah, so it's a character device. So you can just like mess with this stuff and do all this stuff. So uh, let's go. Let's uh, look at where we were looking here. Just the current directory. So. First one kind of describes the type of file, let's say, and you can look at the LS output. Uh, I think the man page would tell you exactly what these were. Now, the next three bits specify for the owner what permissions the owner has. 
So read, write, execute. So if the owner can read the file, write to the file and execute the file. And uh, I should note that this is different than the simplified model where we had append as one of the attributes. This is not a default attribute in the uh, uh, POSIX like access control list model. Um, so that you can only write to a file. Now that, like I said, there are other access control mechanisms on the system where you can make files, I think make files append only or make them um, even a file immutable so it can't be changed by anyone. Anyways, but uh, we can look at that. So this is read, write, execute. And this is what the owner can do. So what is the owner? So we looked at here. Uh, I, let's see. I don't know what this column is. Let's, mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think this is how many files are in that. Is that right? Uh, huh. I don't know. I don't know what this number is. Uh, I'm sure somebody will know and we can figure it out, but it's not important to what we're trying to do here. So I'm going to ignore it for now. But this column, this uh, one, two, three, the third column is the who owns the file. And so here we can see that the user named root is the one that owns the file. And the second column is who's the group. What is the group that owns this file? And that's here, root, hacker. So you can see here they're all exactly the same. Uh, if we look at this device, we can see that it's actually different. So hacker is the owner and the group is TTY. Now, you may think, wow, that seems silly. Why would you store on each of these files? Why would you store like a name like root? Um, and that's just something that LS does. Uh... There we go. Uh, so dash n does numeric user and group IDs. So if I do ls dash l a, -A n, I can see that now because of course computers don't really like storing uh, strings. We'd much rather store numbers. So here the hacker user is user ID a thousand, and tty group is group ID um, five. And if I just do it uh, not to there but to the current directory. We can see that actually root is user ID zero. The hacker user is user ID a thousand. And this temp directory, I actually don't know. We need to uh, look at it to see what it is. Oh, MySQL. So this is the MySQL user and the MySQL group. You can see something cool here that these are not exactly the same, like in the case of root or in hacker. And this actually doesn't matter. So the question is, where is all of this stored? All of this information, LS slash LA, uh, ETC, P-A-S-S-W-D, so password, uh, but shortened. This is a file that actually has all of this information. And let's actually look at what's in this file and the permissions. So we'll go through looking at this output. So this file is owned by root and owned by the group root. It, it was part of the group root. It uh, is a regular file and the root user can read or write to it the group which is root so the root group can read to it and everyone else can read it to it so this is a file that everyone can read i'm gonna use head to just look at the top of the file so we're not just gonna get a bunch of output if you're doing this at home you can substitute cat in here to output the whole contents of the file so here we're looking at head and i believe if i remember correctly this format this first column is the name of the user the second column is a password, but if it's an X, it means that the password is actually located in ETC shadow, <coughs> Excuse me, which we can't actually read. And let's verify that that is the case. Ooh. So yeah, root and group shadow. So the root, the owner of this file, which is root, can read and write to it. The group, which is shadow, can read it, and nobody can do... If you're not in one of those, if you're somebody else, you cannot have any access. So that means I can't... Uh, I can't, like, edit it in a editor. Uh, I'm not getting anything here. I can't cat it. I can't echo hello world into ETC shadow. Because my permissions are denied, right? The access control model says I don't have access to this file. Okay, let's go back looking at our good friend uh, etc password. So uh, this will be sometimes a hash in here, and sometimes it'll just be uh, an X, which means the password is actually in another castle, aka the etc shadow file. The next one is the 
uh, what the user ID is. This next one, I think, I think is the group ID, but that may be an ETC group. Yeah, I wonder if those map up. Uh, oh, we got 12. Yeah, man. Okay. Yeah, I think they do map, map up. So ETC, uh, not group, but ETC uh, password. So this would be the user ID, the group ID, maybe the group name. I don't know exactly what uh, this one is. And then this next one is the user's home directory. So if you've ever wondered how does the system know when I go to like CD um, tilde, it takes me to my home directory. And that is because of less ETC password. If I look at the hacker user, it's the second one is my home directory of home hackers. So when you log in, an environment variable gets set that sets the home environment variable to slash home slash hacker which is why when you use the shell and you CD to the special character tilde, it knows where to go. And this last one is your login shell. So how do you, what, what shell do you want to use when you log in? Um, yeah, so this should be, and if I, let's see, if I say home equals temp, and then I go CD tilde, this is how the shell actually takes me to uh, my present working directory, which is slash temp. So I don't want that to persist, but it's not going to persist. If I log in again, it will use, the system will use ETC password in order to set my shell and set the environment variable. So that is how all that works. Okay, so we are, so this is what uh, the user IDs. <clears throat> so we're kind of starting to, to piece apart these layers. Okay, we have the owner of the file, the group of the file, the permissions of the owner, the permissions of the group, the permissions of everyone else. Um, now the question is, what is our subject? How does it know that it's me, right? And one thing we can use is the command uh, PS, Oops, not PS, PS. So PS reports a snapshot of all the currently running processes on the system. Um, so there's a and we can read the man page. It's telling us that like, hey, if we want to repetitively update this, we can use top. A better one is like htop, uh, which is uninstalled. But and this shows me that actually on this system, there's only four uh, processes that are running. PS, uh, I like AUX. I cannot remember exactly what those options are. You can look at them there. But we can see that there are so PID is process ID. So every process in the system has an ID, and then each process is owned by a specific user. So this uh, P process ID one is owned by the user hacker. It shows me some information on like CPU usage, memory usage, uh, virtual memory usage, I think. I don't remember what RSS is, the TTY that it's using. So like the terminal that it's using, when it started, how long it's been running, and then what the command was. Uh, let's pipe that through less so we can, yeah, so we can see the command is sbin docker init uh, slash bin sleep six hours. And then that, uh, We'll definitely then call the next one, which has been sleep six hours. And then I have this SSH entry point, And now I have PSAUX, the command I just run, which is process ID 218 and 219. So now we've seen everything. So the system knows, uh, I bet if I did AUXN, yeah. So now my user ID uh, is showing not the username, but the user ID. And so this is why when I am running this, I see user ID 1000. And that's what is, so this, um, like if I type in bash, now I'm running in a, uh, new process. And so it's running as user ID 1000. And that's what the system uses when it says, can user ID 1000. So right when I execute, when I'm running this program, this program runs as me, we saw PSAUXN is running as me. We'll talk about it in a second and how exactly that's done. But when I do LS LA, uh, let's see, we'll be a little bit more specific temp and in this temporary directory. And before I hit enter, you have enough information on this screen to understand what's going to happen when I hit enter. Will I be able to see those files? So take a sip of water. You think about that. Okay. So hit it. We were unable to do that. Why is that? Well, 
This, the ownership here is read, write, execute for the owner, my SQL. Am I the owner? No, this process is user ID 1000, not the owner. Uh, the group MySQL is user 1000 in the group MySQL. We could check that and see no, we're not. And so these other permissions are the ones that come into play because we're not the owner and we're not the group. And so we don't have any permissions. We cannot, the system will not allow us to uh, read that, change those permissions. Um, but similar thing, if we did uh, slash temp slash bin, we can see that there we can list all the things in there because it's a directory and we are not root and not group root, but we have the, uh, we can read. And so for directories, reading means list the contents of the directory. Writing means uh, being able to create new files or delete files in that directory. And then X means uh, transmitting into that directory. Um, so this is, so you can actually have a directory that is only executable where you can go into subdirectories there, but you may not even be able to list the directories that are actually there. Uh, okay. So we've talked about for files, read, write, and execute. For a directory, read, write, and execute. Now let's go to the kind of more crazy stuff. So set user ID. This one's uh, crazy and how the whole thing actually works. Uh, and this is what I, I freaking love uh, learning about this this stuff. So I'm going to... Uh, actually, I'm just going to do it. Yes, I know that. Ah, that one's never installed. Uh, Tmux. Oh, I don't really like using Tmux, but okay. Uh, we'll do it for the good of the... It's control B. Yeah, B0. Okay. So I'm in terminal, it's terminal on the left. Um, if I run top, I can see, or PSAUX, I can see that there's all these things and I have these bashes that are running and I can see PSAUX running. Um, so let's, I mentioned that there is uh, ETC password. So ETC password had a field on in it I look at the hacker user, it has this field of what shell does the user want to use when they log into the system. And here it's slash bin slash bash is uh, my current one. I can change that. Actually, can I do that on this system? Because, yeah, let's say, okay. Yeah, because I don't have a password, so I can't do that on here. Um, that's really annoying. Oh, ho, ho, actually. Uh, which? Ha ha ha. Okay. <clears throat> That's right. All right. This is some Pwn College trickery of why this didn't work. So this is a great example. So. <coughs> Excuse me. Here I am running this program. User bin CHSH. Now, this program, it has these permissions. And let's compare this to, I will use another terminal now, and I'll try to make the font just as big for all you fine folks out there. Okay, let's move this one up her. Okay, so now I'm gonna use one of my own systems and hope to gosh that I don't uh, uh, destroy it. But this is a normal system that I have, uh, I have set up. Uh, do I want to update? No. Okay, so I'm going to look at this exact same file on this system. And we can see that it, now we can compare these. And then I can, of course, see with this comparison that the font size needs to be increased. So we can compare these. So this was read, write, execute, read, X, read, X. This one is read, write, S, read, X, read, X. And that S is very important. So that S is actually the set user ID bit. So this is how when I said that these 12 bits don't don't map 100% to the output of ls-la, um, it does not. So the set so this lowercase s means set user ID on this, and set user ID also means executable, um, and which will become apparent of why in a second. So let's see, who am I? I am. I think I'm the user Adam D. Uh, Oh, I can run ID to see that. So I am user Adam D. Great. 
uh, user ID 1000. So if we look at ETC password and look at Adam D, we can see, okay, my current cell is slash user slash bin ZSH. So, okay, now I'm going to do this demo here where we can look at ETC password, exact same permissions, read, write, read, read, uh, change shell. Do I know my password on this system? Maybe, maybe not. Nope. Okay, there we go. I do know the password on the system. So the current one is user bin sh. So if I just do, or sorry, user bin zsh, so I can do bin sh. Now let's look at that, but I want to do something better. Grep for Adam D. So let's do this. Now we can see that there's a bin sh file that's been, that, that sorry, has been changed. This line in this file has been changed. And specifically, it's this line in etc password. But this is a file I should not be able to change and modify, right? Because I am the hacker user, and when I run things, they run as me. But this file can only be written to by a user root. And so this is the magic of set user ID, the set user ID bit. So on chsh, uh, it's the set user ID bit, which means what that means is, hey, when you execute this program, which is why it has to be executable and why they can overlap this on the execute bit, because if it's not executable, it doesn't make sense to have anything there. But when something set user ID, it means it runs with the permission, not as the person who called it, but the person, the owner of the file. So essentially, when I run user bin sh, it's going to create a new process that is then going to run with the permissions of root. And let me get into this system, actually. Uh, new session. Cool. So now I'm in my own thing, which is great. Okay, zero and one. Okay, so now, yeah, so now I'm looking at CHSH. I'm going to look here, PSAUX, grep CHSH. Okay, there's going to be nothing there that, that comes out of it. This is actually my grep that is getting caught here, uh, as you can see. But so now if I run CHSH and I type in my super secret password, that's so long. Now I'm going to set a new, new shell. But before I do that, I'm going to look at the permissions here and I'm going to see that there's a CHSH command running that has a process ID of 702.158, but that's user ID is root. And so that is why this change shell program is able to modify the contents of the ETC password file. And uh, if I show that and I see, boop, it's actually back to where it was. So I was able to change. And this is how kind of, so you can think of programs. So this change shell program, the only thing it does is check your password. And then if the password is correct, allows you to modify just the this one part of this file. It actually does other things. It can... Uh, let you, I think there's only a list of allowed shells, so it won't let you break your system and all that fun stuff. But um, this is how this works. And now if we go back, why can't I do this on Pwn College, right? So let's go back to the, my, my beautiful Pwn College. The reason is because the whole th way this thing works, right, is challenge run. We look at challenge run and it is set user ID root. And that's why... If we look at slash flag, it is only readable by root. And so it's, and if you actually uh, do some analysis on the Pwn College system, which I highly recommend you do, you'll see that the only set UID programs in this entire system are in slash challenge. And so this is how you can, this is why in the only way to get to this slash flag is to break slash challenge slash run. Um, okay, but we'll get into exactly how uh, this works. Uh, but yeah, so this is how we're able to understand exactly what these access control primitives. Oh, and uh, before I go, so set user ID, set group ID is something similar, but the group ID bit is on the um, the group. So it's run as the group that owns that file. Um, and the sticky bit is kind of crazy. So a sticky bit on a directory. So we actually did see this. So uh, slash temp has the sticky bit set, that's the T here on other. And what this means on a directory is that 
uh, they can create files but can't write or rename other directories. So you can think of it actually like append on a directory. And the idea is something like slash temp, you'd want to be you want to create new files, but you don't want other people to modify your files. And that's why slash temp has the sticky bit set. Um, and where that name comes from, because it kind of seems crazy, why is a sticky bit? Uh, it's because in it was actually used on files. So you could set a file with a sticky bit, and it means to keep that program in memory um, for all across all users so that they could save memory. This is not used anymore, and so it's not actually used. But this is precisely how the POSIX access control system and is going to be super helpful when doing the assignments in this module.